You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free with the Sheriff's Daughter program. My name is Julianne Harris and I have been arrested by God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And I've been set free from fear and pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life. I've been set free from. And a special shout out to my dad in northeastern Montana who is a sheriff there. So yes, I am a sheriff's daughter. So that's the explanation of the title of my program. And today is August the 29th in the year of our Lord 2020. And so, man, this year is zooming by already. Or 2021, sorry. (laughs) So it's going by quickly. Apparently I'm stuck in the past, but um, I'm so glad you're tuning in today. And so I'm just going to pick up where I've left off. So I'm going through this series diligently of Face Off. And, you know, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, I would encourage you to do so because this is about when things come at us. And you guys, we're looking around in this world today and it isn't like things are going to get back to quote unquote normal. And I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. However, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, what's the new normal after the quarantine and, and all this stuff oh when it gets back to normal and there's a part of us that want to think that it's going to but i just have a feeling it's not going to and so that's why this message that i'm sharing with you is so vitally important um i i think everything that i share with you is vitally important because it can change your life and it can help you walk through this life Um, being set free from fear and anxiety and all the junk that wants to come with this crazy world that we're living in. And so I would encourage you to go back to the beginning of this series or, you know, I have, I speak on identity a lot. Going back to that, I would encourage you to check out my previous videos. But for this one, we are picking up at E on Face Off. So we have F-A-C-E dash O-F-F. And so... F on face off stands for focus on Jesus. And then A is accept your true identity. C is capture your thoughts. And E is expose your true self to God. So as I was listening to last week's episode of where I introduced this E concept of exposing your true self to God, I felt like I needed to balance some stuff out. You know, because here is the problem. Um, that I see that I even had as a born-again Christian, right? For decades living in sin and not understanding the true nature of God, not understanding how God saw me, uh, not understanding, like it says in John 4, 24, that God is spirit, um, that he sees me for who I am in the spirit. And so there was a lot of, a lot of my prayers and my communication with God when I felt like I could communicate with him, because listen, sin separates you from God. We can see that in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Like the first symptom of them committing sin was they ran from God. And that's what sin will do. It, it didn't affect God's relationship with Adam and Eve. He still came to the garden and communed with them and called out to them and spent time with them and spoke with them. But it changed Adam, Adam and Eve. And that's what sin does to us. It, it It um, causes us to run from God. It causes us to know that we are so unholy compared to a holy, righteous God. So I, for decades, um, I was, I never exposed myself to God. And when I would come to God, all I would do would go over all the the, um, substandard parts of me. asking for forgiveness, begging for forgiveness, not understanding that all my sin was already forgiven through Jesus and my faith in Jesus. Listen, I had I had faith in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He wasn't really my Lord. I didn't understand what that meant, but I felt like if he had to be my Savior and hopefully it was enough to save me. 
You guys, there's some of you that may be watching that you're like, I have done so many bad things and everybody's concept of what bad is is different than somebody else's. Um, you know, like maybe you committed murder. Yeah, that's bad. But Jesus paid for the penalty of that murder. Not, not horizontally, not here on this earth. And so um, you could be sitting in jail paying for murder uh, because that's a natural consequence. But between you and God, if you believed on Jesus, God's already forgiven you of that sin. And until we realize that, we can always go to God um, just expressing our shortcomings and our failures. And, and God's going, wait a second, though, I, that's all been washed away with the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter if it happens tomorrow, you guys. It's already been washed away in the blood of Jesus. And you're like, well, how can God forgive you future sins? Listen, when you got born again, when did Jesus actually pay for your sin? 2,000 years ago. So all the sin in your life that's been forgiven were, was future sin when he died on the cross. So <clears throat> I don't want to get into all of that. But I'm saying um, is my quote unquote relationship with God. I didn't really have a relationship with him because I thought he was angry at me. I thought he was ashamed of me. I thought he was upset with me. And the only thing that that um, kept him from striking me dead was Jesus. And ultimately that is. <laughs> but um, I didn't enter into relationship with him. And so for a couple of decades, my communication to God was what a dirty, rotten person I was. And that, and I thought I was exposing my true self. Listen, when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. When God thinks of you, he thinks of Jesus. The same love that God has for his son, Jesus, who is himself, he has for you. Some of us need to just meditate on that. And it's the love of God that that can radically change your life and change your relationship with someone you know if we think of it in a carnal world um you know you'll have relationships and you're going to open up to someone that you know loves you unconditionally um, some of us though go through life never truly opening up to anyone including ourselves <laughs> we'll lie about ourselves to ourselves and listen, God knows every single part of you and he loves you. Praise the Lord. He loves you before you believe on Jesus. And then once you believe on Jesus, much more, the Bible says. You guys, this is the love that God has for us. And once we start understanding that or even considering it, then we can truly expose ourselves. So I'm saying I, I want to bring balance to this message because... Um, we may think that exposing ourselves to somebody, to God especially, is just basically listing all the terrible things or all the imperfections that we have and God help me. And, and yes, that is an earnest prayer to God, God help me. But when I'm talking about exposing myself, I'm talking about, um, like say for example, I have half my face covered when I meet you. And this is how I am with you the whole time. And, and how many of you know this isn't the full picture until... I expose my full self and listen God knows it already but sometimes we have to um, you know <laughs> I just got an idea and I'm not sure if it's from God or not but you know um, in in this world we have a charge that's called indecent exposure and what that is is when somebody uh, flashes somebody basically exposes their privates to somebody who doesn't want to see it okay and so in in like-minded and and normally in my mind somebody that um, will expose themselves in such a way is somebody that's wearing like a trench coat and is completely under uh, naked underneath the trench coat and then they uh, they flash they they open the trench coat and they expose themselves okay so this is what I'm talking about with God please Please, Lord, help this not hinder somebody right now that's listening because it's not a bad thing. But we have to expose our true self to God. And when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. But it's so it's not for his benefit. He sees Jesus and he sees every thought you have, every emotion you have, every concern, everything that you are. God already sees it. 
and he loves you because now it's you and and Jesus but sometimes we are going to God and we've got this coat on that's covering hurts and wounds and scars and um, just a whole bunch of nonsense underneath this trench coat and we're like okay God I'm here help me and that's a great prayer but he's like I can't help you unless you show me the scar unless you allow me to look at the scar unless you expose your true self to me so it's not about going to God and saying oh I'm so miserable I'm so broken I'm so subpar um, that is not exposing your true self to God exposing your true self to God is is this so let me I didn't plan on going here so let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 139 and this is my prayer and I know I've told you guys before but when I was in Bible school you guys I um, I was like I need some changing in my life <laughs> like my life was a mess literally a mess and my thought patterns were a mess and I just <clears throat> I was broken I was hurting and I wanted change how many of you want change and so when I went to school I was like God I want you to change whatever needs to be changed and this was my prayer I discovered it while I was reading the Bible one day imagine that I discovered it and this was my prayer throughout all of my Bible school and so it's Psalms chapter uh, 139 verse 23 and it says search me O God and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting see this is how God deals with us you guys God um, you know religion says that God's a harsh God and he's judging you for all your shortcomings and all your failings and that's just simply not true no God is wanting to lead you to the way everlasting now remember from my teaching of spirit soul and body that this is an old covenant prayer when it says if there be any evil or any wicked way in me so in your spirit there is nothing wicked <laughs> in your spirit is the fullness of the Godhead dwelling on the inside of you so that's your that's your spirit part but it's your soul part that is uh, messed up it's messed up from um, society from culture from how you were raised from things that have happened to you from things that you've done so this is this is the battleground right I've talked about this a lot and that's the whole premise of this face-off is is winning the battle up here between our ears because that's where it's won or lost so in this prayer though it was like God search my heart God search my thoughts and and when we say heart that's a mixture of your spirit and your soul so when God's saying, when you're crying out to God saying, search my heart, you're saying basically search my mind, my will, my emotions. He says, and, and try my, uh, okay, let's read it again. So he says, um, search me, O God, and know my heart. So he knows your soulish realm. He already knows your spiritual realm because it is him. <laughs> but when you're saying search uh, my heart you're saying search my soul search these thought patterns that I've had that are lies that I need deliverance from this is how you expose your true self to God okay is you're giving him you're allowing him because he's not going to come in there and do it unless you allow him in and you ask him to come in and do this right and so it says search um, and know my heart try me and know my thoughts so it all has to do with our soulish realm. And it says, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Listen, that is not a part of your spirit because your spirit is 100% perfect. It's perfect. But in your soul, it's not. I'm here to tell you, your soul is not perfect. <laughs> and some of you realize it more than others. I realize my soul is not perfect. And that's where I'm asking God in. So when I'm exposing my true self it has nothing to do with my physical body it has everything to do with my thought life with things that I believe with concepts that I have with ideas that I have about God with ideas that I have about myself in this moment that's where we're exposing our true self when something's coming at us right we're focusing on Jesus 
We're accepting our true identity. We're capturing all thoughts that are contrary to the knowledge of God. All thoughts that are trying to come above the all-powerful, all-knowing, amazing God that we have. And then we're going to expose ourselves to God, our true self to God. And we're going to say, God, come and search my heart. Search my soul. And if there be any wicked way in me, lead me into the way everlasting. He's not going to come and condemn you and say, you are just too far gone. That is not our God. Listen, he is amazing and he's long suffering and he's gentle and he's kind and he's merciful. And he wants to lead you into the way everlasting. You guys, if you just expose your true self in this way and say, God, search my heart, search my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way, if there's, if it's a wicked way would be something contrary to good, right? So if I have a thought pattern in my life that is causing death and destruction in my life, God, reveal that to me and lead me into the way everlasting. You know, I've talked about the difference between condemnation and conviction a lot because condemnation is this you no good sorry sucker you how could God even use you how could God bless you after this that's condemnation that is from the pit of hell there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh that means keeping our mind on the things of the flesh but walk after the spirit that's keeping our mind on the things of the spirit See, it's all about what we think on. Praise God. I just know there's somebody out there right now that is just, you're struggling with this whole concept of condemnation versus conviction. And I'm here to tell you, if you feel condemned, unfit for use, that is condemnation. Conviction, however, says this is, this is the wrong thought pattern that you have. And this is, and it has hope attached to it and it has an answer attached to it it says this isn't this isn't who you are this isn't how i created you to think so this thought pattern it needs to go this way instead of this way and there's gentleness and there's love and it's that still small voice that elijah encountered when he had the roaring the roaring wind and the the earthquake and he was expecting to hear god's voice in this huge thing no No, but it was that still small voice. And that's how God communicates with you. And a still small voice has love in it. It has guidance and it has a, it has hope in a future to it. That's conviction. And that's the difference. And that's what this prayer really, you're opening yourself up to allow God to whisper to you and say, this, this isn't, this isn't right, but this is right. Let me lead you to the way everlasting. You know, how many things do we have in our life that are not leading in, not going in the way everlasting? It could be thought patterns. It could be habits. It could be hurts. It could be offense. It could be a number of things. Now this, now hear me out. We're exposing our true selves to God. We're not exposing our true self to ourself to try to pick out every flaw and wrinkle and imperfection because Lord knows that is a bad way to go. There is no life in that. There is zero life in trying to examine yourself and find these things. No, it's keeping your focus on God and you're allowing him to search your heart, to try your thoughts. And go and and if there's anything contrary to what brings life and peace and and the joy that that is already in you, uh, whatever is holding that back, he wants to reveal it to you more than you want it revealed. You guys, I just I don't know how to explain this other than I'm just by faith speaking it that God is going to reveal it to your heart, that he wants you to live in joy and peace. Jesus says, I came that you might have life, not just life, but life more abundantly. Some of you all don't even believe that God really wants you to have a fun, amazing, joyful, peaceful life in spite of circumstances going on around you. 
See, it's not, your contentment isn't based on your circumstances around you. Your contentment is based on your relationship with God and the fact that you know He has nothing but good plans for you. Nothing but good thoughts of you. When He thinks of you, it says He has more thoughts than the sand of the sea. And all of those thoughts are awesome. They are good thoughts. I just, I hope that you can meditate and chew on this and and God's going to give you a revelation of it. As you think of how many awesome thoughts God has of you, continually, it doesn't stop. He never ceases thinking about you. And you're like, well, how can that be possible? Does he do that for everybody in the world? Yes, he does. And that's what makes him God. He's way beyond our thoughts. That's the wisdom of this world is as foolishness to God. So even the smartest person in this world, that would be considered foolishness to God. God is not a foolish God, but I'm saying it, it would be at the lowest, lowest, lowest part of God's wisdom would be the smartest, highest, most intelligent person in this world. That's our God. And, and he thinks continual good thoughts of you. And so if you can just chew on that and embrace it and consider it, then as you open, open your heart, you open your arms, you don't, you don't have the shielded um, thought, uh, you know, expression towards God. No, you're like, okay, God. And now you're inviting him in and saying, God, in this moment, reveal to me anything, if there's any wicked way in me, any wrong believing that I'm having in this situation that's hindering me from, um, from the outcome, from the perfect good outcome that you have for me, that you already have for me, Lord, search my heart, try my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way found in me, lead me into the way everlasting. How does this practically look? Because he's already thinking of you and now you're opening yourself you're exposing your true self to god and he's going he's going to go okay you're limiting me by thinking that i can't deliver you in this situation that's as that's as intense as it could be and it's not like you hear an audible voice some people hear audible voices but suddenly you'll just have a thought that you just know is not your own and you're like i am limiting you to think that you couldn't deliver me out of this situation. And you guys, it may not be instantaneous that he'll reveal to you, or maybe you just won't hear anything. Maybe, maybe he'll, <clears throat> maybe, but here's my point is that you're, you're giving him the open invitation to do it. And this is what I did when I was in Bible school. I gave him the open in- invitation to do it. And he revealed to me in steps and stages of lies that I was believing. You know, one of the biggest revelations that he gave to me, and I know you guys that watch avidly, you've heard this before, but I'm going to share it anyway again, because it's so relevant. You know, as I started beginning to uh, pray this prayer over myself of like, Lord, uh, you know, it's, it's being that living sacrifice where you are exposing your true self to God. And you're like, cut out of me what you need to cut out of me, put in me what you need to put in me. And in this specific prayer it's more of this thought life if there's any wicked way in me uh, lies that I've believed deceptions that I'm under please lead me into the way everlasting and um, <clears throat> and here's a key to that you have to pre- you have to set aside any preconceived notions any predetermined outcomes that you want to see so like when this comes to relationships with people sometimes we think we're exposing our true self to god and we're like hey god you let me know um, is this person a person that i should be in relationship with and but yet we're not setting aside an inward desire that we really want to have a relationship with that person because that's going to hinder god you, you got to truly set it aside. Um, or God, you know, should I be ending relationship with this person? And inside you want to end relationship with this person. And so that's all you're going to hear. Anything God says to you, you're just going to hear, yeah, that's confirmation. I need to end it with this person. (laughs) That's what happens when we don't set everything aside and we don't expose our true selves to God. You guys, this is huge. This is huge in this process. And it, it's basically, it's not so much, um, 
you as it is you're allowing you're asking god the king of all kings the you're tapping into the mind of christ that's already on the inside of you you're opening yourself to god to be able to reveal to you and work on your behalf and set you free in this battlefield of the mind when you are facing off with something <clears throat> so when i was in bible school i was um you know uh i was promiscuous and uh not while I was in Bible school, but it was something I struggled with. And it seemed like nobody else around me dealt with it, uh, with promiscuity and drugs and um, alcohol and smoking and all this stuff. And it was like, I felt like, now it wasn't true because everybody's dealing with something. You guys, that's where we, we can get into bad things when we, <clears throat> the Bible actually says, do not, um, for you, um, comparing yourselves amongst yourselves and measuring yourself by yourselves are not wise. It's not wise to do that because that's the error we can get into is like um, everybody else seems to have this thing figured out other than me. No, stop it. Focus on Jesus, okay? Because everybody else is going through their own thing. <laughs> Don't compare yourselves with others. But this is what I was doing because I didn't know these truths yet. And so I was going, God, what is wrong with me? I'm like broken. Something in me is just not right, right? But I was praying this prayer and I was asking God, if there be any evil way in me, lead me into the way everlasting. And so in this moment, I just was real with God. I was exposing my true self. And I, was, and I honestly believed there was something wrong with me, that I was broken and not everybody else was. And this is what God spoke to me out of Genesis. So if we ju jump over to Genesis, <clears throat> and it was in chapter 2, no, chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and I was reading along, and I came to Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. Now, th the background to this portion of the story is Adam and Eve have just sinned, and like I said, what did they do? They ran from God. They hid themselves. They sowed fig leaves to cover themselves. And um, so God still comes to the garden, right? He still comes to the garden and he's like, Adam, where are you? Um, because Adam's hiding. And so it wasn't like God didn't know where he was. It was more like, what's up with you? <laughs> what's going on? <clears throat> and so Adam says, well, we, we, um, we realize that we're naked. And so as I'm reading this, right, and, and before, I can't remember how long before, but before I'm asking God, God, what is wrong with me? Why am I broken and nobody else is? And um, we got to verse 11. So it's Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. And it said, and he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? <clears throat> you guys, this is huge. God said, and when he's, when I read that, it was like God spoke to me and said, who told you that you're broken? God, you're not broken. You're no more broken than anybody else. Who told you that? See, it was a lie that I believed. And it was a lie as I meditated on it and thought on it further. It's something that is a byproduct of sin. Sin causes you to think things about yourself that just simply aren't true that God doesn't see see it causes you to see things differently and this is what had happened to Adam and Eve listen they were naked all the all up until the point that they ate of the tree but see they saw it differently suddenly it was bad to them they never even it, it says in uh, the previous chapter that that um, the man and woman were naked and unashamed see it wasn't a bad thing it wasn't I don't know how to put it into words other than when they ate of the tree, when they sinned. Eating of the tree, um, I don't think there was anything special about the tree. Uh, I think it was more of their disobedience to God that caused this. When you disobey God, when you find yourself in some sin, when you do this kind of stuff, it causes you to see yourself differently. And that's what God spoke to me in this moment. He was like, who told you that you're naked? Who told you that you're broken? And that there's no hope for you. Who told you? See, there's lies. And once again, we're talking about the battlefield up here in our mind, right? There's lies that we can believe that God wants to reveal our lies. 
If you are in deception, I am here to tell you today that God wants you to not be in deception. He wants you to be set free from that. And you guys, I can tell you when God spoke that to me, I was set free from that deception instantly. He didn't come and say, yeah, you dirty, broken thing. I can't, you know, and he didn't point to this happened to you in your life and this is what caused it and this is this was a side effect and all this junk no he didn't do any of that he said who told you it's a lie you're not broken and in that moment I was set free and that's what God wants to do for you and that is what exposing our true self to God is all about is just saying Lord here I am God here I am show me show me and lead me into the way everlasting so as always I have a crash landing. (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. And I pray that this blessed you this week. It blesses me. Uh, You guys, I think I get more blessed from these videos than y'all do because not only when I'm sharing um, do, do I get blessed, but when I go back and listen to it, I'm like, wow, I should listen to that more often because that's really good. (laughs) So praise God. Uh, I would love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd love for you to share it as well. If it's blessing you, I, um, I believe that it would bless others. Uh, so you can subscribe to it. If you subscribe and hit the little bell, you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Otherwise you can just plan on a new video every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. Also, you can find me on Facebook at arrested and free. You can, um, like me there, follow me there. Uh, or you can give me a phone call or a text message at 970-919-0459. You guys, the, those of you who send me text messages and, and comments on my YouTube page, thank you for that. It really super blesses me. Um, I'm extremely um, busy. I hate saying that word, but I don't always get back to you, but I read everything that's sent. So um, I'm going to try to be better about that. Praise the Lord. And uh, you guys just have an awesome week. Please, please expose your true self to God, not in a, in a weird way. But I pray that this episode has helped you um, set aside those preconceived notions, those ideas of how we want this to go or how we think it should go. we got to set that aside, and that's part of exposing our true self to God. So have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Shine.